This portion of the presentation will demonstrate how Strabo Spot can be used as a digital field notebook for doing tasks like establishing stations, recording observations, and adding other data. While the participants may follow along with the live stream, some may want to follow along on their mobile devices and use this video in lieu of the live demonstration. So we're going to pick up having already made a project, this project being titled uh, Strabo Structure 2020. The three dot menu in the upper right hand corner offers additional tools to edit and manage your projects. And if you're ever lost, the three bar menu in the upper left hand corner can bring you back to the main sidebar menu in the app. In the web app version, or that that's online, this main sidebar menu is on a banner above the app at the top of the window. However, due to limited screen real estate, it's hidden in the Apple iOS version. Start off by clicking Manage under Project to bring up the Manage Project menu. You'll see here there's currently a default data set with zero spots. We want to create a new data set, and we'll do that by clicking the plus sign on the right hand side and enter a new name. We're going to name this one Baseline Fault and we'll save it. On the left hand side you can see that there are options to toggle these data sets on or off. We want to toggle the Baseline Fault option on and if there are multiple data sets that are toggled on we have the option to choose which data set new data are entered into. We want to choose, in this case, our baseline fault. So now we're all set up to work through this demonstration. We're going to go through two ways to add a spot, one from the spot menu and one from the main map. We're going to cover how to add orientations to spots, how to add photos and turn photos into image base maps, and how to use external maps instead of the supplied base maps. To start off, we're going to hit the main three bar menu and click on spots. This will give us our overall list of spots. And as you can see, there have been no spots added to the active data set yet. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a spot through the main map. So go to the three bar menu and click main map. On the left hand side are tools to zoom add different types of spots, add either a single spot, a line spot, a polygon spot, or edit current spots on the map, and the option to toggle different layers. In this case, we're currently using the topo base map. In the upper right hand corner, a green dot will signify that we are currently located. The three dot menu opens additional tools and the crosshairs will center the map over our current location. For this demonstration, we're going to go to Valley of Fire State Park, northeast of Las Vegas. Once the map loads, we want to put on our map box satellite image. And here we can see our main structure of interest, which is the baseline fault, striking roughly north-south. The baseline fault has a moderate dip to the west and is easily identifiable based on red sandstones on the east side in the foot wall and white sandstones on the west side in the hanging wall. Let's zoom in a little further. We're going to pretend that we drove in along this road parked and walked up the four-wheel drive track to see the baseline fault in person. To add a spot from the main map, we're going to click on the spot icon and click again over wherever we want to place the spot. This will trigger the spot menu to open up. The spot name has a default ID that's unique to this spot which can be found in the other section along with a timestamp of when you made the spot. If we were in the field, we could use this to set the spot to our current location, or if we had a more accurate 
GPS unit, we could edit it manually by entering latitude and longitude. We can also enter the radius of the spot, which tells us how big of an area this spot covers. We're going to start off by renaming the spot BF1 for baseline fault. In the notes, we're going to add a description that this is the exposure of the baseline fault. Now, clicking back on the main map, you can see that we have our spot along the baseline fault. Next, let's add an orientation. To edit this spot, click See More. At the top banner, you can see that we now have options for spots, notes, and more. Your screen may look different depending on what options you've selected. To add more options here, Click More, and we want to add orientations, images, and samples. There are also additional options, including sedimentology control and an option to add a spot prefix label if you're adding multiple spots with the same prefix in a single project. Clicking back will bring you back to the spot menu where we now see these toolbars on the top banner. We're going to click Orientations and add an orientation for the fault plane. We click Add a Plane, and now add either Strike and Dip or Dip and Dip Direction. From field measurements, we know that the fault has a strike of 155 and a dip of 59 degrees. We can enter that data and now enter further data below. We can select the quality of the planar measurement and then also select what kind of planar feature we're measuring. In this case, obviously a fault. To save this orientation, click on Save in the upper left hand corner. The compass icon in the upper right hand corner uses the accelerometer in your mobile device to automatically measure the orientation for you in the field. We're going to save this, and you can see that it is now associated with this spot, and we have the ability to add an associated linear feature. Clicking back on the main map, we'll see that there is now an orientation associated with this spot. If we would rather see the spot title, we can click the three dot menu and toggle off show point symbology. Okay, great. Let's explore another way we can add a spot to this project. From the main map, navigate back to the Spot menu by pressing the three bar icon in the upper left hand corner and selecting Spots. We now see that this list is populated with our spot BF1, which has an associated orientation. Here, we can also add a spot by selecting the plus icon in the upper right. Clicking this will pull up a similar spot menu where the spot name is given by the unique identifier, which in this case we want to change to spot BF2. Next, we have the option to either set the spot from our current location, which we would do if we were in the field, or set it from the map, which is what we're going to do in this case. We're going to pretend that we walked along the trace of this fault to an outcrop further to the north. We're going to follow the same method as we used to add the spot before by clicking on the spot icon, and again clicking where we're locating that spot. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and see if I can get a better idea of where we are. I think we're right along this trail, somewhere about there. At this stop, we see that the fault surface is decorated by slicken lines, which we want to measure the orientation of, and we want to collect a sample of the red unit. 
To add orientation data of the Slicken lines, we're going to click the Orientation tabs and add a line. Here, we can add our linear data as either trend and plunge or as rake associated with a planar feature. Our trend is towards 259, and our plunge is about 55 degrees. We have the same options to select a quality of our linear measurement and select what we are actually measuring. In this case, we're measuring slicken lines on the fault surface. Again, if we were in the field and on a tablet, we can use the compass icon to automatically measure that orientation for us. Let's click Save and return to the map. And here you can see our new orientation. Return to spot BF2, and now let's click on the Images tab to add an image. You have options here to either take a photo if you're in the field, add an image from file, or add a sketch. Since we're not in the field right now, I'm going to add an image from file. I'm going to name the image baseline fault and Clicking on the image will bring up a larger version. One great thing about StraboSpot is that we can use photographs as base maps to bridge scales between the map scale and the sample scale. To make this image an image base map, toggle Image Base Map On. To edit the image as an image base map, click on the map icon. Now you can see that this brings up the image, but also has the editing tools available as in the main map. Here we're going to add a spot in the red unit to show where we collected a sample. We can label this spot sample 1, and under the samples tab, we can add field sample data to this spot. Click Save in the upper left and return to the image base map to see our sample location recorded. Note that this is still nested within our spot BF2. Returning to this main spot menu, we see that our spot BF2 now has a linear orientation, which is our slick in line measurement and an image. We also have a new spot which is from the image base map from spot BF2. Let's return to the main map. When we previously located spot BF2 it was only approximate based on map box satellite imagery which doesn't always have the best resolution. As an alternative, if we really want high resolution, what we can do is make a ortho image based on drone imagery that's been stitched together. This is easily and quickly done by a number of methods, and these will be covered later in the workshop. I've preloaded an image for the purposes of this presentation, and we can click on the Layers panel and select this ortho image to display it on the main map.
I am just at the very southern extent of the coverage, but I know that the measurement actually came from a little further to the north. This orthophoto from drone imagery now has a resolution of only a couple centimeters per pixel. I know that our actual location was here as opposed to further to the south. To change it, I can click on this edit icon, click on the spot, and drag the spot to the new location. Once at the new location, I'll save the edits by clicking Save Edits. Now we can switch back to the Mapbox satellite image to get a broader view of the whole field area. These have been some of the basics of using StraboSpot as a replacement field notebook. Stay tuned for learning about more tools and StraboSpot capability.